so let's start the walkthrough by stepping all the way to the right where we can see title all projects so here we can see all the projects that are within uh, this program each of you project manager is responsible for one uh, project within a program and the projects are digitizing payments internal and customer and you need to read the case description to understand the context properly and that is the first step that you should be doing when you start working with the simulation each of these projects um, has been uh, uh, split into 10 different skill domains so the workload is estimated per skill domain here we have negotiation communication and so forth and each of these projects require different amount of these different skills and then uh, when we take a step to the left then we can see the player skills and on this page you can then uh, see all the members in your project team that are available in the beginning of the project so it's the project manager yourself then three members in each of the projects and by switching between these members you can then see how the uh, skills of that particular member relate to the uh, team's average skills. Here at the bottom, you can see all the members in the entire program. So including all the projects, the four projects and all the members in those four projects. And then, for example, if you need to find out who is the best communicator, then you can click here and then you will find out that that's the project manager in team three. And this way you can then try to sort out if your um, team composition is uh, optimal. And if needed, you can also then change team members from uh, one team to another. Now uh, we go back to the beginning and there we have the tutorial. So with this are with some suggested steps and then we have the uh, video available here as well. On the Outlook page, you get um, updates to the, each of the projects. So here, um, uh, every time uh, when a new round is starting, you get some update information. So it is important to read this when you start with the round. Project map is the kind of heart of the project. Here we have mapped all the tasks that belong to each of the projects. So one program is consisting of four different projects and each of the projects have their own project maps. And then uh, by clicking here in the drop down, you can select different uh, layers. So completion status is nothing because we are just at the beginning. We also don't have any team decisions. Well, actually we do have some team decisions here already. Then we have the dependencies on other projects. And these dependencies then mean that, for example, task number 25 says task number 315 is required. This refers to one of the sister projects within the program. The numbering is done so that project one, which is digitizing, the one that we have here, goes from task from 1 to 40. The second project goes from 101 to 140. The third one from 201 to 240. And the fourth project goes from 301 to 340. So then this is referring to the fourth project. And then you need to talk to the project manager in that project uh, in order to agree the schedule. And um, this task number 315 must be completed one round before you want to get this uh, task number 25 completed. And the same principle applies to all these uh, dependencies. So here we have a dependency to the uh, second project that number is 138 and here we have dependency to the third project uh, task uh, number 225. Uh, then in addition we have a quality priority layer here and the quality priority is now really important because the quality tasks are the ones that create the value for the customer. So your task will be to uh, complete uh, these quality tasks as many as possible. Sometimes your instructor may actually tell you that there is a certain minimum level of quality that need to that you need to deliver and sometimes your instructor may let you decide the quality level yourself. But the principle is that the more quality points and more quality tasks you do, then the higher is the value creation from uh, your uh, program. And the uh, value creation is then linked to the winning criteria in the simulation. So you will be 
measured against the other teams and then um, that uh, measurement uh, starts with the value creation and the agreed delivery time for the project is four months which means four rounds and uh, then we have resource intensive just uh, pointed out some tasks that have more than average uh, requirements for resources and then tasks that are outsourceable the next page is gantt the gantt uh, chart may or may not be visible in um, this uh, interface so your instructor may have decided to um, disable this gantt, gantt page uh, from the simulation and use something else but if it's used, then um, the way it works is that uh, the, the blue bar always shows when you have been planning to start the particular task and how much it's expected to take. And then uh, the green bar is going to show when that task was actually completed and how long it took. On the tasks page, uh, we can uh, then start actually allocating tasks to the different team members. and. Um, we do it uh, by uh, uh, selecting the task from here. Now we can see that two of the tasks have al already been allocated to the project manager. So then let's say for the sake of example that we want to allocate task number three. And uh, then we can see how many work days it's going to take. All the different skills that it requires are listed here. And then what's the average amount of work days. And then for each project team member, we can see what is the productivity. So Victoria has more than average productivity, so she's going to need less than the average days. Terry uh, has uh, quite a bit weaker productivity for this task. Melissa, likewise. So let's give this to Victoria and uh, select that here. Task number three has been given to Victoria now. And uh, here, when we scroll further down, we can see this um, uh, chart where the team members uh, time allocation is presented so here green means that the available time has been allocated red means that it has not been allocated and in the simulation we call this slack so people have been assigned to your project and if you don't use them it's waste of money waste of resources and it's called slack melissa and terry have no assigned tasks yet so if we leave the situation as it is then we are going to be um, wasting resources and we actually have to pay for for the slack time so um, even if we don't use them but they have been allocated to us we need to pay a certain proportion of their time here victoria still has some time left and uh, now if we then give her another task let me see task number four we take this to victoria then we can see that 83.69 percent is completed so we can let people work on these tasks without completing them during the same round so here next round would be then the starting point for this task and the task can be assigned to another team member as well so we can have victoria work on this this round and then we can switch that to another person next round we can also give some overtime to Victoria. The maximum overtime is 10 days in the in the simulation per month. And then for the first five days, we pay 50% uh, uh, extra fees. And then the days from uh, five to 10, we pay, uh, sorry, from six to 10, we pay 100% uh, extra uh, for the overtime. Further down, we just see the summary of the tasks and the, the team members. And next, we move on to the project management page, where we are able to see um, the costs for each of the team members. We can see that the uh, individuals have different costs. Victoria seems to be the most expensive one. We can then also see the overtime one and overtime two charges. And then we can see the charges that we are uh, responsible for in case of Slack. Overtime can be given to all the different members here if we want. We can also see that people have different times available. Project manager has 10.5 days. This month, uh, Melissa Terry have 21 days and Victoria has 12.6 days available for our project this month. Here we can transfer individuals to different projects um, within the program. So if we have concluded with, the, with our uh, project manager colleagues that uh, Melissa would be better spent in the, in the payment project. Then we can click here, we move her to payment, and then she will continue working in, in my project for this round. But for the next round, she's going to be moved to 
project uh, called payments and uh, outsourcing becomes available here so when when it say when the statum the status becomes available then we are able to uh, make the outsource uh, outsourcing decision if we so decide and the cost is here and then the included tasks are given there. Uh, the final section here, which may also be hidden by your instructor, uh, is that uh, we are able to move uh, cash between the project within the program. But uh, essentially, this is just moving money from one pocket to another, because together we are responsible for the program. And whatever transfers we make here will not change the program level budget to any direction. Tracking page shows uh, how we are spending the money. So here we can see that the total budget is 100,000. That is actually for each of the projects uh, within the program. And then we can see how we are consuming that. Then we can see how we are spending the time. And then we are seeing how much we are collecting quality points. And uh, remember that the quality is the one that uh, is linked to the value creation in the project. And the rest of the page are then uh, different summaries and details about the uh, costs and time. Player skills we already looked at and all projects we looked at. And then here you see the drop down in the right. And then that always allows you to go back to the previous round if you want to see what has been done in the round before. At the time of the deadline, the system calculates the results and they become available here. So we have this program uh, summary for your own team and then uh, the winning criteria calculation is done here and depending on how many quality points you have collected the system calculates the total value creation then we deduct the costs then um, we deduct the fees for being late and then we also deduct uh, the value for unfinished work so basically at any point uh, during the rounds you are able to see uh, what is the current standing uh, of your project because we also calculate the unfinished work once the once all the tasks have been completed then obviously this unfinished work becomes zero if everything has been done on time then we don't have any lateness fees the winning criteria will be just the difference between the value creation and the cost then uh, we see the details for each of the projects within the program we can see the time cost and quality summaries here as well we can see the budgets and then finally we are able to compare our own program to the other programs in our course so this is the place where you can compare your own performance to your competitors this concludes the walkthrough Thank you very much and I wish everybody a good learning experience with Session Project.